All right. Hey, Torin. Hey, family. Uh, Torin, awesome to hear from you over the weekend, mate. Uh, I'm super excited to hear that you're just getting so into, uh, obviously, uh, practicing, but also doing some writing independently with uh, the bass thing that you were talking about. So good on you, mate. That's really, really awesome. I said to Heather, it's uh, great to get a message from a student uh, that you're actually like out there on the weekend, like I'm doing with my guitar here, uh, rocking and rolling. So super cool effort, mate. And I can't wait for Monday where you can uh, show me what you've been working on and we can also keep working on that fantastic song. Okay, so uh, here is uh, something, we haven't done a video in a while, but I might as well do a quick little reviso video for uh, doing the pentatonic scales with box number one and box number two. Uh, for the reason that they can be pretty hard to remember because uh, it's so many different notes and so many different kind of fret markings that eventually it can kind of get a bit overwhelming. So what I'll do is I'll just lay it out really simply for you and that way anytime you need to come back and practice this video, you can anytime uh, you feel like you'd like to. Okay, so the first box of the A minor pentatonic scale is pretty easy. Everything starts from the fifth fret. So you'll be going from the fifth fret to the other string as a starting point. So to give you an example, I'll play through it one time and then we can kind of elaborate a little bit more. Okay, that is box number one. All right, so box number one, Torin, uh, consists of the following notes. We're going to go string by string, starting from the low E string and then going down. So on the low E string, we go from the fifth fret, which is the A root note, all the way up to the eighth fret. So five, eight. Then on the A string, we go five, seven. On the D string, five, seven. On the G string, five, seven. Now on the B string, we go five, eight and on the high E string we go 5-8. So just have a look from the top. 5-8-5-7-5-7-5-7-5-8-5-8. Okay, pretty simple. Practice that with alternate picking up and down. You should be able to get it pretty, pretty quick. And uh, you can use that to obviously create some licks and to do some soloing, which we'll be talking about uh, in the next coming couple of weeks, which will be very exciting. But you're already doing a little bit of that on Wednesday of last week's lesson. So that was very, very awesome of you, mate. So congratulations. Okay, so let's do box number two. This is much more complicated and it's important to remember where your fingers go because it's all about the ease of getting up and down the fretboard whilst playing this. So in this case, we're actually going to start using our second finger. So our second finger is going to be on the eighth fret of the low E string, and I'll play the entire scale and then I'll list them note by note. Or the entire box. Okay, so we start on the low E string and again going down from the top. So we go on the low E string, eight to 10 using the second and pinky finger. Now using the first and pinky finger, we go seven to 10 on the A string. And again, same thing on the D string, 7 to 10, first and pinky. Now for this one, we go a little shorter, 7 to 9, first and third finger in this case. And then this, when we actually go down to the B string, we're using our second finger again, similar to what we did on the low E string, and our pinky. From the 8th to the 10th fret. And again, same thing again, 8 to 10. So let me count from the top, and I'll just say the numbers on the fret markings as we go down. 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10. 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10. Very important when you're playing this is to make sure that that finger too, the second finger comes down when you've gone from that G string where you go essentially 7 to 9, that you use that second finger to do the 8 and then the 10 and then the 8 oh, and the 8 and the 10 on the E string. So there's lots to do there, but also when you're soloing as well, any note that you pick that will be in the key of A or A minor must be one of those notes consisted or consisting in those two boxes. So you could do this for instance. What I'm doing is I'm holding down the B and the high E strings on the fifth fret, sliding them to the eighth fret and then sliding them to the tenth fret. The reason that would sound okay over the key of A is the fact that all of those are a part of the boxes. So if you have a look at the first notes, for instance, these two, well, they're both consisted, in, or they're both in that first box. And then we'll go to the next one too, on the eighth fret, same deal, same deal with the second box. So we can run more in detail over that in the coming weeks, because I don't want to make the video too long. But great job doing uh, the creative practice and working on this stuff on the weekends. Hell yes, get your rock and roll on. And soon you'll be able to use the licks to do some really cool stuff like this.
Got to have a mandatory cheek shake at the end of every um, rock and roll riff. That's something I haven't taught you yet, Torrin, but it's an essential. Don't do that on stage. Probably no one will want to be in a band with you. There you go. Me being weird again, but hopefully funny at the same time. All right. Awesome, mate. Have a lovely rest of the weekend. I will see you at four o'clock on Monday. See you, buddy. Practice away.